And of course, electricity supply, you've just mentioned, closing down uh, power stations, electricity supply, 14,704 jobs. Yeah, and again, Alan, these are all the critical sectors of our economy. You know, mm. agriculture, mining, electricity generation. These are the foundations of an advanced 21st century economy and society. If you shut these industries down, you are going to fundamentally change the nature of our society mm. and not in a good way. Mm. Look at what's happening overseas. Look at what's happening in Canada mm. or the UK or in Sri Lanka. Mm. They, they've gone much further down this road. It is not a road we want to go down. And we need our political leaders to listen to those in the regions and yes. to back in mm. our regional, our well, region. Well, sadly, workers sadly, and industries rather than running them down. Yeah, sadly, in the National Party in New South Wales, a state, there's no scholarship, no intellectual base to even understand this. Uh, this research, can I say to our viewers, and I know you're watching all over Australia, but particularly New South Wales, for example, they've cited that in the Upper Hunter, that's a significant seat. The jobs at risk make up 26% of all jobs in the electorate. In the seat of Barwon, way out west, the jobs at risk make up 20% of all jobs in the electorate. Cootamundra, wonderful farming district. Jobs at risk, 19% of all jobs in the electorate. Way out there in the seat of Murray, jobs at risk, 16% of all jobs in the electorate. Go north, up round Armadale and everywhere, the Northern Tablelands, wonderful country. Jobs at risk, 16% of all jobs in the electorate. So just repeating your point to emphasise, you're saying regional communities face the risk of being wiped out. Well, they do, Alan. And the other point to make is it's not people living uh, in the eastern suburbs of Sydney or the North Shore that'll pay the price. These are the, you know, it's the inner city people that are coming up with these policies that are telling us we need these policies. But when you look at the detail, who pays the price? They're saying, well, it's going to have to be the farmers, the miners, the truckers and the manufacturing workers that pay the price, not those in the inner cities. Mm. It shows how divided we are mm. in New South Wales and across Australia, yeah. that we have a two-tiered system where there's one set of rules for the political elites in the inner cities and another set for those living in the outer Brilliant. suburbs. Brilliant. And the but those political regions. elites in the inner cities, those political elites in the inner cities rely on these rural industries to provide their energy and their food and they go to stand by and see them destroyed because of this idiotic and reckless emission reduction mandates. I mean, you and I have been saying this for years. I mean, the pig-headedness of people like Bowen and Keane is breathtaking. And this promise of green jobs, oh, come on. I mean, what did you calculate from your research? What percentage of jobs in rural New South Wales would be created by the so-called green economy? Well, there's only about 10,000, Alan, according to the official documentation coming out of the government and the opposition. So we're saying there's going to be about 138,000 jobs that will be put at risk and 10 or 12,000 jobs that could be created. And again, this is based on the, own, the government's own figures. That's it. And the reality is uh, these new green jobs are simply not there in the numbers that we need them to replace the jobs that are going. And one of the fundamental issues is so many people in this debate are naive. You know, it, there's sort of this good natured naivety where they take, you know, they take what is given. They, they say, oh, well, this, is, this will all be fine. There'll be oh. more jobs coming in. Those jobs are not. Th those yeah. jobs are not coming because I those think, in the inner cities. They, I think they it's don't worse like than that. You. I think it's they, worse than that. They look down on regional Australia. The, these people are ideological prisoners. Ideological prisoners. It's ideology over reality, and I've said many, many times, it's the National Economic Suicide Note. And I'm saying to you now, tonight, it's not long until the economy commits suicide as a result of what Tony Abbott rightly called crap. Daniel, keep at it. We will talk again. Grateful for your input and the fluency with which you present the argument. Daniel Wilde is the Deputy Executive Director of the Institute of Public Affairs.